welcome to the station, Kentucky's only news and commentary show based on a conservative perspective. And it's, it's produced by folks that are Kentuckians, are local, or we're local folks, we're not folks from New York or LA who own media companies that happen to have a TV station here in Louisville or Lexington. No, we are people that live here and work for people that own stations here in, in Louisville, Kentucky and Kentucky as a whole. And so we represent Kentucky Viewpoints because we are Kentuckians. And so, so we want to thank you for watching the program and, and, sh and sharing, uh, letting us share some of our thoughts. And, and so if you've, um, you're paying attention to our state uh, politically, you understand there's a governor's race that's, uh, that's underway. There's a primary, and especially on the Republican side, that's very active. And we want to keep up with what, what's going on. So every, every couple months, we want to zero back in on just the, uh, the machinations of the, of the primary and see who's, see who's um, uh, just what, what's happening there. Because we, we have a major decision to make. Who, who are we going to put up as conservatives to run against Andy Beshear? And if there's any, any governor that needs to be, that uh, doesn't need a second term, it's Andy Beshear. And so, and so we need a really solid Republican candidate to run against him. And so... Uh, who is who, who would that be? We have a lot of great candidates, but that's part of the problem. We have a lot of great candidates, and they're all running at the same time. That, that, that causes a lot of issues. So we'll let's figure out uh, how to how to approach this and, and uh, this this month because it changes week to week. But right now, let's figure out how to look at it. Okay. So to that point, we have a couple of guests tonight. We have Bob Scott, uh, who is our Kentucky's Voice contributor and great all-around uh, gentleman and and uh, man with many a uh, lot lots of years of experience and and uh, all things political in the state. And then we have Lee Watts, who is like one of our favorite guests and who is just a, a, a wonderful content producer on, and uh, on, especially in, on in YouTube. He's really blown up in the past couple of years with his YouTube channel. Um, and uh, and it's, it just does some, some of the best uh, yeah, yeah, commentary on, on, on things happening and, and with the legislature and with the governor's race that, that's statewide that, that anybody in the state's doing. I mean, and so, so we, we really, uh, really love your work. It's Patriot Point is the channel on that's YouTube. Right. So make sure you tune into that, to, to Lee there. So, so let's get into this. What is, so Lee, um, we've got a race and it's, we've got several candidates. Why don't we just run, th run through the top candidates right now on the Republican side? Who, who are, who are they? And just maybe the top four or five. And All right. Is, well, yeah. um, the, we have tw a total of 12 running, yeah. but uh, I would say the top four or five would be Daniel Cameron, mm -hmm. uh, our current attorney general is probably polling in first place. Okay. Uh, then we have Ryan Quarles, who is our uh, mm -hmm. commissioner of agriculture. Yep. Uh, you have Kelly Kraft, who had formerly been the Trump ambassador to the UN and also to Canada. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would say it would be Mike Harmon, who is our current Kentucky state auditor okay. and then the battle for fifth place would be between two other fellas okay. um but those are the top four contenders yeah and, and we're going to get into this later but you know in a, in a rate in a field this large there's a good chance that somebody in the middle wins just just that's so, right but, but i don't want to do a spoiler and talk about that just yet but that's uh so even the, even the in the mid middle of the pack has a chance to pull this out so let's let's uh well let's do this um uh, we, we, there was a debate recently, about two weeks ago, that uh, that occurred. We're going to show you a, a clip from from that. Actually, a story, a news story on on that debate, and we'll see how uh, how that um, how that unfolded. So let me get back to this. There we go. Let me go back to this. All right. Sorry, I should have this queued up, and we're we're rolling. George, four Republican candidates in Kentucky's race for governor met on the debate stage for the first time tonight. WLKY's Drew Gardner was there. He joins us now live in the studio with the highlights. Drew? Well, Vicki, a wide variety of topics were covered during the hour-long debate, including abortion, education, and gender-affirming care. The four candidates were generally in agreement on almost all of it, which made it tough for any candidate to stand out. So afterwards, I asked them what they thought was the biggest issue facing Kentuckians right now and how they will set Set themselves apart from the other candidates. For the first time, these four Republican candidates for governor faced off in a debate, each sharing a common goal of making Andy Bashir a one-time governor. Attorney General Daniel Cameron says Bashir's values are out of line with the rest of the state and the biggest issue facing Kentuckians. Just making sure that our values are represented going forward. Uh, having a governor that respects the values of the men, women, and children of all 120 counties, I don't think we've had that over the last three years. Cameron says his experience makes him the best candidate 
to change that. Well, a lot of us are able to talk about what we'll do, uh, but I've been able to show it over these last three years. For Somerset Mayor Alan Keck, his prime focus is getting more people into the workforce. We bookended the Keck game plan with the economy and family. Uh, stronger families will produce better workers. It'll help our schools, help our public safety crisis. We just got to get more people to work. He says his straightforward approach and willingness to break from the pack on certain issues makes him the best choice to lead the Commonwealth. You're going to get real answers. You know, I don't duck and study. We've got a game plan. We've got a platform out there. I think Kentuckians deserve to know where we stand on all the issues, not just the ones we think are important. Agriculture Commissioner Ryan Quarles says inflation is crushing Kentuckians and will be his top priority. Inflation is hammering Kentucky right now. I've been out in the rural parts of the state. We have people that have never been on, uh, had to go to a food pantry for in their life, have to go buy food or go pick it up at food pantries. Quarles has made reaching out to rural areas a priority and believes it's what's going to help him win. I have a grassroots people's first campaign across all 120 counties. We're visiting about 20 counties a week right now. We take a lot of pride in that. Uh, a lot of these other candidates are not visiting the rural areas of the state. State Auditor Mike Harmon believes Bashir himself is the biggest problem facing Kentuckians today. Because he's the one that has worked to take away our, our civil liberties. He's the one that destroyed so many businesses. He's the one that kept kids out of schools for a year, year and a half, and that's why we're so far behind. And he believes it will be his experience that defeats him. You know, I've got more experience than everyone there. I mean, I have 13 years in the House. I've got seven plus now as auditor. Now, one candidate was missing. Former United Nations Ambassador Kelly Kraft was invited to tonight's debate, but she declined the invitation. Biggie? You know, that, that's pretty interesting that, that Kelly Kraft uh, declined to, to debate there. And, and, mm -hmm. um, and right now, the race, if, if you, from what I see, it's really a race between Kraft and Cameron. It, w would that be accurate? Or at least those are the two front runners? Um, if I you're think looking that's at... the way that it's often being uh, portrayed. I don't yeah. know if that's actually accurate. Okay. Um, Kraft does not have a connection with the Kentuckians. Uh, mm -hmm. She's uh, a billionaires. Mm -hmm. and uh, spent her time doing a lot of foreign things. Um, and I think one of the reasons she ducked out of the uh, debate is because it would be showing that she doesn't have that connection to the average Kentuckian. Mm, okay. uh, but she does have a great deal of money. Mm. So she's been able to buy a great deal of television time uh, and other ads. Mm. Uh, now Cameron, you'll notice in the interview, he was saying uh, how he was reaching out to a lot of the people doing a lot of county visits. And he has by far the best ground game of any of the candidates. Mm. Uh, and I think he'll especially be strong over in western Kentucky and in the more rural areas. Oh, the Cameron uh, role. Cameron. Uh, uh, there's no, Corals. Corals. Okay, Corals. Corals. Well, okay, really um, interesting. Especially yeah, okay. with, again, his Agriculture Commission background, yeah. and uh, he's been very active in that. Okay. Um, then, of course, Cameron, uh, he has two very unique ties. Mm. Uh, he First of all, he got the Trump endorsement, mm. uh, and Trump took Kentucky by 25 percentage points mm -hmm. in the last election. Uh, however, with that, he also came out of Mitch McConnell's office. Mm. Uh, and to have Mitch and Trump background is a very unique position. Yes. Uh, yes. And of course, as they say, Attorney General AG stands for almost governor. Mm. There you go. <laughs> um, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and then the final one being uh, Mike Harmon. I noticed he was the only one who really started uh, calling out uh, Governor Bashir on his specific things that he has done. Mm. Uh, and I think uh, Harmon, more than any of the others, has spent more time going to more individual groups. Um, and when you get different, uh, three, the top three or four people splitting the vote uh, between so many of the big organizations in the Republican Party, yeah. I think it's any one of the top four, maybe five people's game. Really, that's interesting, yeah. And well, and we touched on this earlier that, you know, back in, um, when Bevin was running, uh, he won because he was really a third choice in a lot of ways. And the, and the, and the, two, the two top candidates, they split the ticket. Well, is that the right term? I mean, they split the vote. They split the vote to where uh, he won a plurality, plurality of, the, of the votes. And so he became governor. And so, um, so this could happen in this case. You could get a case where, um, where you get uh, uh, you know, Kraft and Cameron and Quarles. Maybe they, they get the most votes, uh, uh, but they don't get enough votes to to outweigh a plurality that somebody in the middle of the pack gets. And so uh, somebody and like Kentucky, a, uh, for the governor's race, does not have a runoff uh, law. That's it. So it's just you, you could want, if somebody were actually able to get 30% of the primary vote, 
they'll win the election. They'll win the election, um, right. But I don't know if we'll have any candidate receive actually 30% of the vote. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. So, well, and we have a great field. I mean, I, I would really like all of them for different reasons. But, you know, you, you mentioned that um, the, the Kelly Craft is buying ads. We've got an ad from Kelly Craft. Let's, let's see, what that, see what that says. Is Daniel Cameron a strong Kentucky conservative? Hardly. He was spokesperson for a woke organization tied to the George Soros-funded ACLU. Cameron pushed for eliminating felony charges for drugs like fentanyl and for putting criminals back on the street. With illegals and deadly drugs flowing across Biden's open borders, who would keep your family safe? A strong Kentucky conservative governor? Or career politician Daniel Cameron? Kentucky's soft on crime teddy bear. So, Bob, let's bring you in on this. I mean, I think you've met uh, Daniel Cameron, and, and of course, you know, Cameron has a, um, a history with, with uh, working with McConnell and, and uh, one of his protégés and, and was proud of that early on in his, in his career. And, but now McConnell's sort of fallen out of favor with a lot of grassroots, grassroots Republicans, and, and I think for good reason. He's, he's, he's made some missteps here in the past few years, uh, not supporting some of the uh, more controversial issues that, that mean a lot to to conservatives so um what are your thoughts on on cameron and and uh, does that does kelly craft's commercial there really you know re reach home to you um personally i don't like the commercial uh but i i don't think it's i think it's uh divisive uh, obviously uh kelly craft feels that uh cameron is we all uh, seem to be leaning in that direction. It would, would be the uh, top candidate um, in the field. And I would take some um, humbrage with, with regard to him not being a true conservative because I know he was right out front on pro-life issues uh, and in defending uh, those issues and uh, even all the way up to the Supreme Court. So, uh, you know, just on that, th those issues alone, I, he came across as a very, very strong uh, conservative and, and, and voice for conservatism. And it is interesting, uh, the fact that, that he has an endorsement not only from Mitch McConnell, which you would expect because he did formerly work for him, uh, but also uh, Donald Trump. So, uh, and as we have talked about before, Kelly Kraft uh, actually worked for Donald Trump uh, as the United States ambassador uh, to the United Nations and uh, also um, uh, ambassador to Canada. So it's an interesting paradigm that's shaping up. And I and, and every you are correct, uh, Lee, uh, with regard to that someone could come in with a very low percentage uh, when you're talking 12 candidates sneak through and end up being the the nominee uh, for it so it looks to me like uh kelly's trying to um as much as she can carve out uh, a position uh that, that maybe puts her in a position to uh be that candidate that comes forward but i i personally right now don't see that happening you know, he um, he did get a, get a lot of attention from from Donald Trump. You know, dur during the campaign in 20, 2020, um, he spoke at the convention, at the Republican convention. Yeah. Uh, I remember when Trump came to uh, came to Kentucky during the campaign. Uh, he he really highlighted Cameron quite a bit. I think he said something to the effect of, "Here's your future governor," or "Here's uh, or or no." I think it was something like, "We we expect some great things to." from from uh, from Daniel Cameron in other words you know his bright future and so yeah there there's definitely uh, an endorsement that goes goes back quite a few years there and so that's a very good point so yeah this you may not be you know he was the McConnell guy but every, listen if you're if you're a Republican in this state everybody was a McConnell guy at some way at some point and he, he kind of runs the Republican Party in this state at some level so everybody's worked with McConnell not that he's a bad guy i still like mitch mcconnell right you might hate me i still like him mm -hmm. the man if it wasn't for him we wouldn't have had roe v wade overturned all right let's yep. just face it you know he, can't argue that yep. can't, and, and uh he, he he fought that battle took a lot of heat for it and uh, the, the country is in the country and lives are, are are indebted to him for that and so uh but you know if he's on his way out for, through to the retirement i hope he does it gracefully and and, and uh does it with a lot of honor because he deserves it for that so um 
but uh, but yeah. So and, and yeah, and Kraft is a you know she's but she's solid. And no, no, what, what her career as as Trump's um, ambassador. Uh, I should know this, but ambassador to who? She uh, started off as the amb- uh, U.S. ambassador to Canada. Canada, uh, okay. And then he moved her eventually to become the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. Okay. Um, and I think, again, I think it's one of the reasons that she ducked out of the um, debate is yeah. because you got to say, if she didn't have a billion and a half dollars, what qualified her for either one of those positions? That's right. Um, that's true. And yeah. you really don't have anything to go back and look to that's right. in that regard. Yeah, that's true. That happens quite often with the donor class. You know, they... You know, they, they, you, you know, here I'll, I'll give you a billion dollars and make my wife ambassador to Scotland or something. And I, I've, you know, just it, yeah. It's not like U.S. ambassador to Canada is a high risk position. Uh, that's right, exactly. Or, or it takes, um, it takes so more I ceremonial think, than anything right. else. Yeah, right. um, Cameron having a much more uh, headline time, especially during the lockdowns, fighting Bashir in court. Uh, I think that gives him a lot more connection to average Kentuckians. Um, and by her doing an attack ad, you'll notice the thing about an attack ad is you're just saying the other guy's bad, but you're not saying why you are good. Mm. Uh, and I know as a conservative, I'm more interested in knowing why are you the best choice? Mm-hmm. What makes you you know, better than the other choices that we have? Right. Uh, and I didn't see that even included in the, in the attack ad. So right. I, I can understand you're going to do an attack, but at the same time, you're like, this is how I'm different and I'm better. And those are the kind of things that I look for. Uh, yeah. as, as a conservative voter when I see an ad. Yeah, well said. And I also look at, look at for somebody who, who could potentially win, all right? Mm-hmm. And so, and, and I, Cameron's got a great story. I mean, you know, it, it, unless you're watching this on a podcast, you never heard of Dan and Cameron. Uh, uh, he's African-American, right? And so that is a unique thing in, in this state and in this party in and, and, and many ways. Not that, I mean, the Republican Party was started because we are against slavery, so... African Americans usually all be Republicans up to a point, but the fact that he's a very strong conservative and a, and a prominent, uh, you know, can, uh, politician in this state who's who's a Republican, and, and African that, that's a wonderful thing, you know, and because you've you've got a a, a large community of uh, African Americans the, who tend to you know they they want to support somebody from their own ethnic group, their own background, and and they have a have a heart to see people succeed uh, for, from that it background. It would take out one of the Democrats' major uh, cards they usually play, which is, you're yeah, a racist. That's right. Uh, they wouldn't be able to play that card. So exactly in that right. way, he would be a very wise choice. That's right. Um, then, of course, we can do. We might see something like what uh, Governor Bevin did, uh, mm-hmm. is that he selected an African-American for his running mate. That's right. Uh, and we have yet to see uh, Cameron or any of the candidates except for Kraft to pick a running mate. That's right. Uh, and she's picked uh, uh, Kentucky State Senator Max Wise. Okay, interesting. Okay, very good. Well, so so that's, you know, he's got a great story. I think he's a very compelling candidate. He's done some great work in, as Attorney General, and uh, we put probably, probably not highlighting that enough because he does have a strong track record there. But but um, let's talk about Quarles a bit. He's, he's, he's a strong, strong candidate. So you know, agricultural commissioner, uh, strong connection with rural Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And, and before uh, well, that, he was in the... Uh, the uh, House of Representatives for several years. Okay, very good. And so, uh, U.S. House. That's what I mean, uh, the, the, no, no, no. The, the Kentucky US, House of Representatives. He's a state rep. Okay, got it. That's right. And so, um, so what, what, what stands out besides his you know, political background there? Uh, well, what, I know again, he is. He, uh, he's yeah. taking his conversation to more what I would consider the kitchen table type uh, topics. Mm. Uh, he's made a big point recently talking about how he'd like to revamp some of the tax programs that we have here in Kentucky said he'd like to finally eliminate uh, the death tax mm. um, because uh, in a death tax in Kentucky can take up to 16% mm. of a person's, um, of what they've left, their inheritance for their children. Uh, he's like, There's, it's not right, we need to get rid of that. And uh, I have to agree with that, um, mm. not only uh, as a conservative, but also specifically from a Christian principle uh, because you see that kind of principle in the Bible, in the book of Ezekiel, uh, chapter 46 and verse 18 where it says that the prince shall not take of the people's inheritance. So you have the prince, the government official, says Hmm. it's because somebody died, you're you're not entitled to the inheritance that's to go to the children. So it's a good conservative principle, which follows a biblical principple, and it's amazing how those two things go hand in hand. Isn't (laughs) it striking? It always seems to work out that way. I've never heard that scripture. That's really neat. I I, I like that. The Lord knew what he was doing. well, that's that's tremendous. So now, so besides quarrels, we have uh, so the fourth uh, candidate, I guess, 
if, if we were doing an informal poll amongst us, would be who? Uh, uh, Mike Harmon. Mike Harmon. Harmon. So. Uh, he had spent, um, again, I believe 13 years in the House of Representatives at the state level. Uh, now he's been the state auditor for two terms, uh, term limited. Um, and he has actually done quite a bit during the... Um, lockdowns that mm -hmm. I don't think he's getting enough credit for. When mm -hmm. they found the, was it 400,000 emails that had never been opened, mm -hmm. uh, made it, he's the one who found that and brought it to the people's attention. Is that right? Um, wow. When uh, Andy Bashir had done several other things, it was Auditor Harmon who actually cited that when he was checking the books and would refer multiple of those things to the Attorney General, mm -hmm. uh, recommending that he actually take action on these. And the attorney general chose not to. So when, when you actually get down to it, it was uh, it was Auditor Harmon who was stronger against Bashir than what we saw uh, Daniel Cameron actually wound up doing, uh, which is why we saw in that interview recently that we saw Auditor Harmon was saying, listen, let's remember it was Bashir who put everybody out of work, uh, who did all these different things. When everybody else is talking about themselves, mm. uh, we have one candidate who's like, listen, this is how we can defeat this guy by highlighting and reminding everybody what he did. Yeah. And um, he has been working very uh, quietly, doesn't have the money of the other candidates, but he's been doing a lot of, uh, he's been campaigning now. He entered the race first. He was the first candidate mm, uh, to right. enter the race. Um, right. And he has been working it for two plus years. And I think that he has a silent movement, which mm. will show up on election day. Yeah. Is it enough to carry him through? I don't know. I think uh, all of these candidates would have been wise to choose a running mate yeah. um, so they could have covered twice as much ground. True. Um, but for whatever reason, uh, yeah. they've decided not to. Yeah, okay. Maybe it was a big enough field that maybe they felt like they, if I waited, I can pick one of the other candidates and we can combine our votes. And maybe It's also why we haven't seen, normally in a primary, uh, when you get closer, because now we're less than two months in, uh, two months out, yeah. uh, with, you'll see a lot more attack ads. We're really only seeing that mm. from one candidate. And that's because because they haven't chosen a running mate. Right. Uh, all of them have in the, the back of their heads, they're like, well, if I don't win, if I get enough, mm. maybe I'll be picked up as the mm, lieutenant there, governor yeah, running mate. That's right. Yeah, don't, don't, don't attack by a candidate fellow candidates too hard. I, I might want to be their lieutenant governor. Uh, well, um, you, know, you know Reagan's 11th commandment. Yeah, thou shalt not attack another Republican. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, there's, and that's true. Our, our party tends to do that, but the Democrats don't. They, they just kind of line up and work with one another. But, uh, well, let's talk about Bashir. So Bashir is, uh, how is he polling right now vis-a-vis -vis any, any Republican? That, that um, I've um, only seen two polls, uh, mm -hmm. one done uh, at the first of the year, and it says that uh, he was ahead. However, um, I very much do not trust polls. Yeah. Um, it depends who is um, conducting them and the, the what they agenda that they want to put forward. Right. Uh, I like to say that polls are like Texas steers. There's a point or two in there somewhere, but mostly there are a lot of bulls. Yeah, exactly right, especially this early in the game. Uh, yes, early in the game. Because the campaign, people don't know who these folks are, except right. for Cameron. Uh, three Man, months ago, uh, most people didn't know who was even running for. That's right. for. Um, plus, all of them are now just running in their own party versus somebody who has been on not only governor for three years, but then he had about a year and a half for he had a daily propaganda hour for yeah, an hour. There we go. That's uh, right. And you cannot underestimate the value of that. Yeah. Nobody could ever buy that much TV time. That's and the liberal right. media gave it to him for free because they want to keep him and his agenda in office. That's it. exactly right. It was a daily infomercial, yeah, mm -hmm. daily infomercial for, for, for his campaign. And, of course, you're referring to the uh, daily COVID uh, news briefings. Right, that, which after the first that, few um, months had almost nothing to do with COVID. That's right. That's right. Exactly right. So that was just a... You know, that's just an impact that makes an impact on on his um, on his recognition, favorability. You know, I, I know there's a lot of a lot of folks who are very concerned about that that pandemic, who maybe maybe may, maybe took some uh, solace in the fact that our government is out there every day, giving us you know, giving us a pep talk. But uh, I think there's a point there where it became a little bit of a cynical approach. Like I, I'm getting this airtime, I'm going to keep using it, and right. uh, and I'm going to maybe foster the fear a little bit to show that I'm the hero and. And uh, matter of fact, I got to do some things to make it look like I'm a, I'm a hero. I'm going to go shut down a church. I'm going to go sh make create sure the kids crisis. So create the crisis, can the so crisis. You, can, you can solve a crisis, and it's and it's it's really tragic. And so, um, so what so what would be you know, Bob? I'm going to go to you. What what do you think Bashir's I guess real weaknesses as a candidate going into this next election? What what would be the one thing that, um, or maybe one or two or three things that that opponents would would uh, would, would come after him on and that, that are really legitimate concerns and and um, what are your thoughts 
I think they're going to have to go back and drill down to some real actions that he did, in fact, take uh, during uh, the pandemic. Uh, it, it, and I mean, he absolutely, uh, you know, where he was sending state troopers to to churches and uh, taking license plate numbers. Uh, those are all things you start thinking about it uh, should concern anybody. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or a Republican, not not to mention the fact uh, of the long term effects it's had on our state economy uh, with regard to uh, taking a very hard line stance on on businesses being open. So, right. Uh, but but unless you're a liquor store, unless you're a liquor store, you you, you know, yeah, that's correct. Shut the churches down. Well, let's open the liquor stores. Yeah. Uh, But what, you know, I was going to say is uh, it's always tougher to to be an incumbent, especially as you already mentioned, uh, both of you mentioned that that had a lot of very free uh, airtime. And I know one of the polls, I think it was the Mason Dixon poll. really had him up significantly and i tend to agree with lee it's still a little bit far out uh to be making any any bold predictions but uh make no bones uh you know i think this most recent uh election cycle that happened in november uh which would have actually there was an amendment that would have taken away some of the governor's power um it was defeated uh, and voted down pretty handily now, there's other reasons that people made arguments it wasn't as crafted and explained and, and written the way it should be, but it did happen. Um, you know, that that to me was a, a red flag that went up. If you are a conservative uh, and, and seeing, and, and not to mention the fact that what happened with, with um, you know, the, the whole uh, abortion discussion, uh, and or I'd like to say mm. pro-life discussion, uh, that happened as well. So uh, it, Bob, you can take it, that call if you need to. Sam? Yeah, no, it's. Uh, I told him <laughs> I think it was a telemarketer, but uh, right. you know, uh, it, it's something that we all need to be concerned about um, as uh, conservatives and as Christians. Um, I'm just. I'm hopeful that that a a good candidate uh, will emerge. Um, yeah. Uh, Governor Bashir uh, does need to be a one-term governor, in my opinion, and uh, mm-hmm. hopefully that someone will step forward and uh, be able to take up the mantle and and run against him. But it's 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 going to be a battle. Yeah, it's you know, an uphill fight. Yeah, it's going to be. But but at the same time, this is traditionally a red state, right? We have two Republican senators in this state. We've had uh, look at our legislature. It's like uh, three fourths or more you know republican and so um by all other measures this state should have a republican governor and so maybe and maybe just his election was a fluke in this sense we had a very you know unpopular republican governor that he was running against i mean not very unpopular just not popular enough to motivate certain demographics and certain uh, interest groups to really come out against and get some traction against that former governor I'm, of course i'm speaking of uh, matt bevan uh mm-hmm. and so maybe it was just the bevan candidacy versus a bashir candidacy that made that election unique um you know maybe maybe just all things are coming back to normal and this this term and we would we should naturally get a republican governor i'd you know now i wouldn't want to hang my hat on that as a republican candidate because like you said that and like like lee has said we've got uh, you know d- daily one hour two hour infomercial for the for the bashir campaign that are, that's been running for two years and so that's that's a and plus he's an incumbent so Oh, but we speak to that. You, you think it was just that that election was unique, or you think uh, the, a I have serious problems with that election. Um, mm-hmm. You you have people who are voting the Republican for every single statewide office by overwhelming numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also do this for our senators, for all of our congressmen, save the one in Louisville, mm-hmm. um, and then they instead of not voting for governor, they vote for the exact opposite party and agenda and platform. Yeah. Uh, I actually did a thing on Patriot Point where CNN was caught uh, live on air 
mm. uh, where it was showing the number this. of votes. That, very, very compelling video. That I mean, went uh, yeah. up for Bashir, went down for Bevan. That's it's right. the exact same number down to the that's last right. digit. Um, so I th that's why I think actually that's quite arguably the yeah. more important race in Kentucky this year is the Secretary of State's race yeah. in securing our elections. And sure, elections. that one should really get a lot of attention. Because it was the machines, folks, let's face it. And this show is sponsored by Mike Lindell. <laughs> My pillow. Come on out, Mike. Tell us. <laughs> so, no, but it really, I mean, it, it really makes you wonder. And, and there's a, and go, go to uh, Lee's uh, site, Patriot Point, and look at that video from that election where he shows the, uh, actually on air, uh, right behind this this commentator, the, the, the numbers, the vote numbers just change and where votes go from from Bevan to Bashir just right behind and it's like well either yeah. somebody in the back is just not on election something. night you keep adding to the votes you don't take votes you don't away take votes away yeah that's right so it was something really fishy now is that tied into the election system and that's showing hacking who knows but boy that really makes you wonder and 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 uh, so, yeah, so maybe there was something going on that was very unusual, except for Bevan was pretty unpopular with a lot of folks who. I think one of the key reason, uh, demographics that Bashir was able to mobilize was the teachers. Uh, however, yeah. I do not see them rallying to him as much this time. Right. Uh, a lot of things have been happening in the schools. I think he's kind of uh, lost his grip on that demographic. And we'll have a lot of teachers who had supported him last time who I do not think will this time. Right. Well said. Well said. Okay. Well. Well, this is great. So, uh, well, let's wrap this up. So, l l l right now, if you were to pick a horse, who would it be? Uh, who I think is going to win the election? Mm -hmm. No, you know the Derby. No, uh, I mean the election. I mean. <laughs> uh, right now, Mr. Cameron is in the uh, in the lead. I think he has a strong lead, and I believe he is most likely to win the election. Yeah. Uh, whether I think he is the best candidate or not is another subject. Yeah. Um, we it's like you said it before. We have a lot of great candidates, mm -hmm. uh, but we as conservatives need to find out uh, and decide who is going to be our best candidate. There we go. Right. Yeah. Bob, what are your thoughts? I tend to concur. Um, I think Cameron is, uh, it's his race to lose, uh, at least uh, in the primary. And um, I, I believe in a head to head matchup, um, it's going to be very close. But um, if everything is played uh, fairly, um, I think Cameron should come out ahead on that, that as well. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens, though. I think that. You know, what Lee said, there's a lot of great candidates, um, and I would have no problem supporting most of them, if not all of them, you know, that, that are running. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see these next couple months, and it's hard to believe, my goodness gracious, it's it's on top of us here here in the next uh, 60 days. So yeah. Primary is what date? It's I May. Think May the 16th or May 17th. 16th. Which okay. Was the Tuesday. Yeah. Very, very close. Well, I would encourage you all to follow these candidates and look, go to their websites, listen to their commercials, uh, go out and see them, meet them, talk to them, ask them questions, and and figure this out. You know, who, who, in this day and age, the way our country is moving, it's now much more important who your governor is, who your local state rep is, who your state senator is, who your mayor is, than it is even who the president is and who who your congressman is and who your u.s senator is because things are starting to evolve in a way that this country was really founded on it's like we have this, these states i mean we have a federal government that deal with federal issues then we have states that deal with things closer to home and 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 with all this division in our culture with all this all this uh you know different views of how to deal thing deal with things culturally from from lgbt issues to um to, to the economy, to taxes, all this stuff. A federal solution is not realistic anymore. You, you just can't, can't pull it off at the federal level. It's just, it, it's just too complex, too cumbersome, and there's too much division. So just naturally, things are going to start devolving back to the states. And so the, a Roe v. Wade is a good example. You know, the, when, when over, over, Roe v. Wade was overturned. What did that do? It just, it just sent that decision back to states and to make that call. So, so it's more important than ever to know who your local politicians are, who your governor is, is, is gonna be, because they have more impact in your life than, than you realize. It's, it's, it's Bashir that shut down your church. It wasn't, it wasn't Trump, it wasn't Biden, it was Bashir that did that. And so, so be very, very, very aware of who, who, we're, who we're voting for locally, because um, they really have an impact in your lives. But, I want to thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Please go to his channel. Uh, Patriot Point is just a 
killer channel. I mean, it's, it's really funny, too. You, you get some <laughs> really, really funny bits on there, too. And so, Bob, thanks again for being on the show, and you're watching this station, Kentucky's Conservative Outpost, for news and commentary from a conservative perspective, and we thank you for watching.